Okay, who is not excited about moving to the next chapter? Everybody is, right? Okay, so um, waves and tides are finished now. Uh, we talked about waves hitting the coast, tides hitting the coast, tsunamis, and so on. And now we will learn more about the coasts themselves. Uh, this is more like a geography lesson, uh, definitions and some processes uh, before we move on to uh, more about the uh, regional circulations and so on. Okay, So this is uh, the essential uh, content of the chapter. Uh, we'll look at the special features that the uh, coastal regions have. Uh, beach is one of the most dominant coastal features. Everybody goes to the coast for the beach. Uh, we already talked about the waves, the wave energy, erosion, and then there are other processes that uh, human beings contribute to in terms of changing the dynamics at the coasts, the shoreline processes. Uh, sea level rise is uh, constantly a uh, buzzword that we are using which is now pretty serious because it's not only rising but the rate of rise is accelerating so sea level, sea level rise is accelerating in many places so that's always uh, something that uh, is of great concern at the coast especially if you have uh, built something very close to the coast or if it's a port, it's a naval station and so on and so forth. Uh, we will see how different the coasts are and what makes them different and how human beings uh, create the processes that favor erosion or there are natural processes and how human beings want to uh, prevent them uh, to be able to live uh, close to the coasts. These are kind of the things that we will look at uh, in this chapter. Um, defining the coastal regions, better to just look at this figure here. Uh, this is kind of idealized. Obviously not every coast will have all these features but you will recognize most of them. So there is a broad definition of the beach. Okay, So when we go to the beach we typically say the sandy part is the beach. Actually technically speaking uh, that is what is called a berm. Okay, berm is the sandy part in this uh, pure scientific definition and then the en entire extent of the coastline down to what is called a longshore bar which is related to the tidal action is called the beach and beyond this low tide breaker line as I said not always defined at all the coasts it depends on many other factors uh, is called the offshore and towards the coast from this uh, longshore bar uh, the low tide breaker line you have the near shore and the shore or the foreshore okay so the shore includes the foreshore and the backshore <laughs> The back shore includes the berm and so on. Basically there is a seasonality here. Typically you have a high tide line and a low tide line and we will see the processes which bring the sand in and br take the sand out and there is a seasonal dependence of the wave energy. So the beach itself can look very different when you go away from the tropics. In the tropics you don't have a very strong seasonality, right? pretty much the whole year is nice and warm. This is why people like to come to the beach uh, in the tropic beaches in the tropics in the winter. Correct? So avoid the winter where they are in the mid latitudes and find some nice tropical beaches. Okay? Coastline uh, is basically uh, the extent to which the uh, marine processes, the coastal processes affect things. So you can think of it as uh, how far the sea salt would go in, how far the sea breeze would go in and so on. There are many coastal features uh, that you can find. Uh, it can go for miles. Correct? Okay, so you have the high tide shoreline to which the water sla sloshes up during the uh, high tides and within the uh, water column you have 
the beach face. So you have the wave cut bench, longshore trough. So essentially the sand is being moved onto the beach during the mild summer season when the wave energy is low, waves are milder, and then wash out the sand during the other seasons. Again, you don't have to remember all the terminologies, but uh, terms like backshore, foreshore, and shoreline are used in common languages. Okay, so backshore is part of the shore above the high line, uh, the tide line, and foreshore is the part of the shore that's exposed at low tides. So it's di it's submerged during uh, the high tide. Okay, so shoreline is essentially the water's edge that migrates with the tide. High tide line, low tide line, that is the shoreline with the backshore and the foreshore. Okay, so you also have the near shore, the offshore, the beach, and the wave cut bench. Again, mm -hmm. you cannot find them exactly the way the, they are defined everywhere, but the berm is pretty much there in all the sandy beaches. We will see that during the winter in high latitudes it might get washed out because of the wave energy as I mentioned. And beach face is basically the slightly wet sloping surface that extends uh, from the dry uh, beach part to the shoreline. Okay, And remembering shoreline is the water's uh, front line that moves with the tides. <laughs> high tide, low tide. Okay, So that's called a low tide terrace as well. Uh, you have the longshore bars, so the energy brings up, breaks uh, at the uh, edge of the longshore bar and deposits sand during the high tide and then it washes away. So it separates the longshore bar from the beach face which is this uh, wet part and the dry part together. Okay? So, just definitions. Just look at the figure for a few moments and just try to get uh, comfortable with the terminology. You don't have to remember all of them as I said. Okay?